a kind introduction. So thank you for kind introduction. And today I will uh, give uh, another version of my uh, docent slides. It's improved with uh, with uh, several uh, new achievements which we have uh, done uh, in uh, uh, recent year. So uh, firstly, I will I will just uh, give the outline of, of the talk. So it's it's quite uh, uh, long, but I will try to skip very deep technical details. So I'll just mainly focus on uh, what we are what uh, what what is most important takeaway. So I will first tell it about, about myself, then about motivation and some basic principles, which we will need to understand uh, so we can uh, get through the technical material. Then I will tell about the speci specifically about the device we used to achieve these all results. And then we'll show several experimental de demonstrations, which we uh, did by using different signals. And then I'll show uh, what we plan to do in the future with this technology and, and some conclusions. So let's start first with education some, and external, external stays. So I did uh, my last degree was docent in physics with specialization in optical communication. But all three degrees I have done in, uh, in Riga Technical University. I have been also partly in uh, Den Technical University of Denmark. And then uh, I came to Sweden back in 2015. So, uh, and uh, I have been traveling quite a lot and these are external states, which means that I spend uh, some time, uh, for example, uh, most of these visits when I was employed at RICE, then I spend uh, some, some days at, at uh, uh, foreign uh, companies and uh, most of these visits are related to the component I'm gonna talk about today. So, and then, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, then the motivation. Uh, so I, I give an example from myself. So uh, I was thinking how many connected devices do I have at home? And then I was started connect, uh, counting how many they are, like including printers, TVs, old mobiles from, from children. Uh, and I get close to 20 connected devices, which was not like that uh, some time ago. So, which means that uh, uh, you consume a lot of data and then this data has to be stored somewhere and transferred to you quite quickly. So uh, today I'm, I'm gonna focus on, uh, now I don't, I'm not gonna focus on all the network which exists and which parts are there, but I will most specifically look at the, uh, for in data centers and these links in the data center inside and between data centers as well. So uh, just, just uh, some examples. Of course, there are different technologies available for uh, transoce transoceanic links or metro links or, or 5G front hall and access networks. So, but the uh, main focus will be on, on data center interconnects. And uh, you probably know what is data centers and they know that they consume a lot of energy, but they store also a lot of data. And then I have a nice example here uh, which was shown in ECOC 2021 conference in uh, in uh, one of the opening speeches uh, by researcher from uh, Nokia Bell Labs. And then here, here we see a picture uh, and these are the view of data centers. And you can see that they, and then there's also date when it was built. So they built one in 2009, then 2012, 14, 15, 16, and in 2017, they had to build two data centers. So this can go uh, exponentially. So <laughs> you don't want to build another 10 data centers, build 10 data centers in the same place, even though uh, Microsoft is already testing out how to uh, put a data center on the bottom of the sea. So, uh, and, and, and how to overcome this is to make the devices uh, which are used for communication in the data center. Uh, higher speed and higher energy efficiency. So you can uh, transmit uh, more information with the same energy. So, uh, and uh, the thing what I'm, what, uh, what I'm well, talking about, it's, it's technology which goes into these packages. It's a specific packaging for transmitter and receiver for a pair. So, and then it, it goes into some, some equipment. 
And these are what we typically been dealing with in, in data centers. But then there's also one uh, trend where the, when this all uh, uh, components goes into here and then there's only fiber connecting this place to here and it calls onboard optics, which requires a different mindset, mindset to how to uh, create, how to integrate uh, different, different parts of, 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 of the transmitter and receiver. So what, uh, yeah, I will, I, will, I will talk about some things which are inside these modules uh, and which are used for, for high-speed communication. So uh, basic principles, so I'll just show all the pictures. So, um, so what, what do we do in, in, in a physical layer? So we want to transmit uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, data. So from, uh, yeah. from point A to point B. So uh, you have a lot of zeros and ones which you want to transmit. And how do you do that? Uh, first, you represent logical information in, into digital signal. And then uh, this digital signal, for, for, in order to transmit it over some distance, you need to modulate on some carrier. And then you have a carrier. In this case, the carrier is a, uh, it's a, it's a light wave carrier. Uh, which uh, has a certain frequency. And in, in optical communication, that's in terahertz, uh, the frequency. And in wavelength, it's uh, uh, this particular device is around 15, 15 nanometers wavelength. And then you see when you have uh, ones and zeros, then you have, a, uh, you have the light or you don't have the light. And this is a time representation of, of the signal. So, uh, and then what happens up over the transmission that you don't get exactly the same signal back. So you get noise impairments and different other impairments coming both from the components and also from the media. So uh, this is a classical uh, setup, which, which, I've been, which I will show throughout the presentation. So we have a laser which generates a lightweight carrier then the modulator where the modulation happens. And then we have optical fiber over which we transmit the data. And then we have a photo detector, which down converts from optical carrier back to a, a baseband signal. And then you get uh, noisy, but then with specific signal processing routines, we can recover back, back the same data. And we usually compare the data we sent with data which we received. And then we count how many errors did we get. And then we divide number of errors with the bits transmitted. So we get something for very reliable transmission. Then you get a bit error rate, we call it. And it's uh, down to 10 to minus 9 if you don't use some specific signal processing. And uh, what we do in our experience, we achieve something like bit error rate of 3 E minus five, or, or uh, sorry, uh, one E minus three, something uh, at that level. So I just I would just want to introduce some basic principles, and then uh, what? How do we represent that? So we take all these ones and zeros. We take only one period, and we put put one on top of each other. So we get something like a eye diagram. So when this is a zero level, and this is one level, and this is a transition from zero to one. And you kind of get an eye opening. In, in experimental systems, <laughs> this eye opening is not that wide. So there are also tricks and methods how to make this opening wider and how to distinguish whether you have received zero or one. And of, of course, you can, uh, what we want to do is, as I said, we want to transmit more information with the same amount of energy. So, and then we try to, implement on the same uh, bit rate, we put more levels. And then we can say that this is one symbol, this is second, this is third, and this is fourth symbol. And each symbol corresponds to two bits. So which means that we uh, double the information we can transmit at the same uh, uh, bit baud rate. So uh, yeah, and then practically it looks something like that. So, uh, and then there's also some tricks what you can do. Uh, because uh, one more, one more uh, thing we need to know throughout the seminar is that uh, this is uh, a, a time domain representation of the signal, but we can also look in the frequency representation of the, of the signal. And that's where the bandwidth comes into the play. 
And then there's some tricks we do uh, when we have a limited bandwidth in the system, then we can do uh, a trick called pulse shaping when we can reduce the number, uh, the, the amount of bandwidth we need. So this one, uh, so we, this one is uh, the same signal, but we apply a pulse shaping here. So we need less bandwidth for this signal compared to th this signal. So we lose uh, in uh, horizontal resolution, but we gain in vertical resolution. And that we can do also for multi-level signals, like for example, for dual binary, and also for uh, PAM4, where you have a, a three openings. So, but there's also price to pay. Uh, Obviously, if you have uh, one opening, then the distance from here to here is larger Then you have uh, the same distance divided by two or the same di distance divided by three. So there's a penalty to pay. So, uh, and, uh, uh, and uh, obviously you need to optimize depending on what system you have. For example, here I have a, a time domain representation of the signal and here is a frequency domain representation of the signal and for example if we use a dual binary then we need a half of the spectrum uh, to transmit the same uh, amount of uh, bits but then we lose in, in the resolution so uh, then we need to use these two eyes instead of one big eye so there are there are things you gain and there are things you lose uh, so uh, and then we try to run a lot of numerical simulations comparing this uh, uh, non-return to zero for example when we have uh, limited bandwidth so this is 112 gigahertz and this is 56 gigahertz and we do it for non-return to zero and then we use a dual binary approach and on this axis we have uh, received optical power at a certain bit rate so uh, which means that if this one is is the lowest, this is uh, it's the best because then you need the least power to detect uh, the information. And we see that uh, by decreasing the bandwidth in both cases for non return to zero or for dual binary, uh, this this curve goes up. So we need more power to the to 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 reach the same uh, bit error rate to to get the same number of errors. That, for different for for a fixed time period, so uh, and then we can we get the same results also for uh, pump four when we look at the band with limited systems and uh, yeah and also if we compare uh, if we compare dual binary and pump four for dual binary we need even more so we need the most power for dual binary which is filtered and the least power we need for non return to zero which is not filtered. So, uh, and then now we know the bit the bit error rate, we know the bandwidth, we know the uh, zeros and ones and time representation. Now let's see what is the practical device uh, we can use to generate the signal in, uh, uh, as this is the part of the laser and modulator. So, and uh, uh, these, uh, Externally modulated lasers have been uh, developed in KTH since 1997. And then this particular is the outcome of HECTO project, uh, which was led by Professor Urban Westergren. And uh, here are some references to original papers where, where they describe how the chip works, what is the principle. So basically you have a laser part here, and then you have a modulator part here. And it's a bit special structure, which is called traveling wave. And using this structure, you can extend the bandwidth of the device. And in this case, they claim they ex expand up to 100 uh, gigahertz. So and that, this is the, how the package device looks like. And this chip is, is, is inside there. And this is the 100 gigabits they managed to achieve uh, during Hecto project back in 2010. And uh, when I came in 2015, this device was laying on the shelf. And uh, I was thinking, okay, if you can do 100 gigabit on of king with this one, and you have 100 gigahertz of bandwidth, so you basically don't need that much of bandwidth for 100 gigabit, as we I was was showing numerical results before. So thinking, okay, can we do something with it? Can we can we uh, transmit higher speed than just 100 gigabit with this particular device? And here here are some basic characteristics and it has quite high output power which is also very important 
if you don't use uh, any amplification. So you just have fiber which has loss, you, you need to compensate for that. So then we started the first experiment, say, okay, uh, let's try to do something at 100 gigabit, but let's look at dual binary approach. And this uh, experiment was done in uh, Ghent University together with the uh, uh, researchers from, from there and also from some Chinese university. And then there's also one more uh, concept we need to understand that there's also a, uh, an equalizer. So what do equalizer does? It's, it predicts the response, the frequency response of the system. And in this case, it's a comparison. So you have the transmitter, you have I, I opening, then after transmission. So you have a bandwidth limitation in the system and it's also noisy. You don't get any I opening. So if you apply the equalizer, then you can get opened eyes of dual binary. So in this case, we had the, we were severely limited by uh, uh, test boards for the transmitter and receiver and also RF amplifier. So uh, optical components were not the main bandwidth limiting factor here. And that you can see from this picture. So this is all system. This is the frequency and this is the amplitude. And then you it, it's combined uh, RF uh, photodiode and RF amplifiers. And then it's this one is fiber, uh, photodiode and, and EML. So you see that the for one for 500 meters, you get the bandwidth very flat up to 70 gigahertz. Uh, and then when you start to transmit over fiber, so the fiber introduces not only uh, attenuation, but also some frequency selective fading. So which becomes worse with the, with the distance. So basically this having this dip into the spectrum is not very good. So I, I will show what we could do about it. And here's also some pictures of uh, how the devices looked like. Uh, so, uh, uh, and then uh, we show one case. Uh, so in, in this case, the system was bandwidth limited. And then we tried to look at the speed of 70 gigabit per second because we, we wanted to measure the detail rate down to 10 to minus nine. And this is the like received power what was required. So for example, to get to uh, 10 to minus nine, uh, you need it like around uh, minus 0 0.5 dBm of, of power. And then uh, when we increase the distance of non-return to zero, then, then you see that we cannot reach the, the to very low bit error rate. So it's very high. And then uh, uh, if we transfer it and, and start to detect instead of the middle of this eye, but we look at this eye and this eye instead, then we can increase uh, then we can gain the same bit rate and we can gain like 5.5 dB uh, at this uh, level. So, and we can get back to 10 to minus 10. So uh, there's obviously a, a benefit there by using dual binary when, when the system is bandwidth limited. And then we did the same uh, measurement also, but for 100 gigabit, and then we were measuring dual binary eyes. And then uh, it was, we achieved uh, a higher bit rate, but then we managed to transmit over uh, 100 gigabits, uh, over two kilometers. And the, the problem here is that the, the laser, which is emitting at 15, 15 nanometers wavelength, and that's for standard single mode fiber, uh, the chromatic dispersion is pretty bad. So you cannot go quite far. So uh, yeah but that can be changed in, in the device design. So then the next one was uh, on of keying. We tried uh, uh, and uh, for that reason, we went to, uh, uh, we went to, went to uh, uh, France and we visited three, five labs and they have a, a specific chip which can generate uh, on of keying signal with a very good quality at very high speed. So at that time when we did this experiment, that was the highest rate of on of keying, even though it was quite close die, but that at that time was the highest rate. And we managed to uh, publish this work at the uh, OFC conference in post deadline session back in 2018. And uh, then we used this signal at the, at the transmitter. And here is uh, how the transmitter looked like. So 
be, uh, here here uh, uh, here is the amplifier we used also developed the hecton here is our uh, laser plus modulator uh, and then uh, here are some uh, references to to people who who did the made the devices in in the hecto project and then uh, what we uh, what what we did so we needed to generate this uh, high speed signal and then we started with uh, 51 gigabit per second and then we delay and interleave so we use a two to one selector uh, as uh, as a as a package component so we doubled the bit rate here and to double it one more time then we needed to do it on the chip so uh, the package uh, of the component actually is affecting how high speed signal you can send uh, send uh, with it. So we have to use a, a selector on, on the chip, and then this is the signal quality we get uh, at the at the output. And uh, yeah, and, and the biggest problem here was actually the clock distribution in, to synchronize all these uh, steps. And uh, you see that this there's a very nice thin sine wave, and this is wider sine wave. So this was actually setting the limits on, on how good we can go. And that was related to uh, some 10 megahertz reference clock quality. Uh, so, okay. Uh, and then uh, we did uh, this for inter data center distances. We did it for 10 kilometers and for 80 kilometers. And this is how the eye diagrams look before digital signal processing. And there's quite heavy signal processing done uh, some heavy signal processing routines uh, employed and then we get uh, the eye opening 140 and not very open eye diagram at 204 gigabit uh, per second but that, at, at that time uh, that was uh, the best one could achieve and then uh, i'm saying uh, because we have some newer results which i'm going to show later on and then we show a typical bit rate versus received optical power and in this case, we are talking a bit rate down to 10 to minus 3. And then we need to use some uh, post-processing, uh, like forward error correction, uh, which, we, which, we, which is not uh, very acceptable in, in data centers, because you want to remove as much heavy signal processing as possible. And then we did the same bit rate measurement for uh, 200 gigabit. Uh, and this was done for transmission over 10 kilometers of fiber. And in, in both cases, we were we were compensating for the fiber dispersion. And these are compensators which are made here in, in, in Sweden. In Shista, there's a company called Proximen, which make uh, uh, fiber brag ratings, which we used in this experiment. And then... Uh, uh, what we were looking for was can we get uh, uh, multi-level signals in, into the into the device uh, even more than dual binary so then we visited uh, keysight and that's one of, of the trips and here you can see that we had the access to arbitrary waveform generator which can generate these electrical signals and we have a digital storage oscilloscope, which you can store the signal on your computer, and then you can do uh, processing on it uh, using MATLAB. And uh, here is the component uh, at the transmitter and the component at, at the receiver. And then we had some amplification and, and attenuators and, 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 and stuff. So uh, at that time, that was the highest uh, rate arbitrary waveform generator and digital storage oscilloscope, which was provided by Keysight. And we used the same uh, uh, electro, uh, electroabsorption modulator uh, in, in, in this experiment. So, uh, and then here, here's a basic simple, uh, setup. So we have a laser plus modulator here. Then we have uh, an electrical signal generator we amplify it then we trans transmit it over 400 meters of fiber and then we compare two scenarios where we amplify signal or we don't amplify the signal and this was one of the first experiments where we managed to show that uh, uh, you don't uh, need to amplify if you go if you go to multi level so 400 gigabit pump four so and then we also look at even higher uh, uh, 
le levels of amplitude for this one. So, uh, and here you have a typical response uh, frequent, uh, so the bandwidth available in the system. And the main limitation was coming from uh, arbitrary waveform generation, generator, which was up to 55 gigahertz. But then, uh, as you can see, the green curve and the blue curve, they follow each other quite nicely. So these dips uh, here were coming from arbitrary waveform uh, generator. And nevertheless, we managed to achieve 100 gigawatt uh, pump four. So in, in this case, we have a, a three eye openings. We have four levels, and which means that 100 gigawatt stands for 200 gigabit per second. So which means that uh, we also achieved uh, what we could do with one of King. So we we doubled the rate of uh, signal uh, compared to uh, compared to a previous experiment, we double, uh, compared to hecto results, we managed to double the bit rate we transfer, transmit with the device. And then we get the same I, I, I also after the transmission. And in this case, we didn't use uh, much of uh, amplification or, or post equalization in, in the system. And then we also compared uh, the bit rate and we optimized it for two modulation formats for PAM4, where you have three eyes, and for PAM8, where you have seven eyes. And then for PAM8, uh, the eyes are so tiny that you can achieve bit rate of like 4.e minus 2, which is very high bit rate and not acceptable in, in data center interconnects. So we then we focus more on, on PAM4. Uh, and then we also look add amplifier and see how good we can be with the amplifier. And then we see that without the amplifier, we are not that bad uh, in, in the signal uh, performance. And we did also that for 300 gigabit uh, on PAM8. So we, yeah, so it was uh, just more bits on, on the same symbol. And then I would like to show uh, the newest results of the of the which was recently uh, shown at the OFC conference 2022, uh, just uh, some months ago, and then uh, so as I said, you I said try to look at the eye diagram which we had uh, before. So uh, now we have an opened eye diagram for 200 gigabyte on of keying, and that's without EDFA. And then uh, as as a state of the art, so. Uh, this is the experiment also showed a bit earlier today. So that was the first experiment we showed 204 gigabyte on of King. Uh, the same group, who, uh, but uh, which uh, three five labs, uh, they uh, they were collaborating with uh, with polymer uh, polymer uh, polymer uh, modulator group who uh, from Jurgen Lethold. So they they managed to achieve. Uh, higher speed, 222 gigabit per second. And the benefit of that modulator is that you don't need to have an amplification stage here, which, uh, yeah. But then uh, there are limitations on how high power you can put on it. And then there's a quite large loss. You have two our erbium dot amplifiers in the setup to transmit over 120 meters. So when the eye diagram is not so open. Then the next work was, uh, also shown in in a recent eco conference so it, it's two two premier conferences in optical communications one is ofc which is usually in us and eco which is usually in europe so uh, and then uh, they showed also uh, 220 gigabyte but the eye diagram was closed so and they had to use edfa and they used also polymer modulators uh, here uh, so, uh, and then uh, one, one very good competitor to our externally modulated laser is thin film Maxander uh, modulator. Uh, in this case, they didn't use any amplification or at all. And then they, they had to use an external, uh, uh, external laser, which is not monolithically integrated with thin film Maxander modulator. But that's, that can be solved, and that's uh, I've seen recent papers where they integrate the laser together with the modulator. So hopefully we'll see some new world records coming soon. So uh, and then uh, here is the setup with the picture. It's 
pretty similar to the setups I showed before. We, we generate the signal. And in this case, the arbitrary waveform generator was with improved bandwidth and improved something rate. So we could generate higher speed signals with it. And then we use the same uh, external modulated laser, the fiber photodiode, and also the oscilloscope where we record the signal and, and store it. So uh, in this case, we managed to achieve quite high output power because we, we, we apply different settings on the modulator. And then we drive it at 17 degrees Celsius. Then we reduce the bias to 1.6 volts, so which allows us to get higher output power. And uh, yeah, so here you see also the arbitrary waveform generator on the picture. We have a component here, which is the laser and photodiode, which is here. And then we have a, a full spool of fiber in between and optical attenuator here. And these are just the control instruments to provide uh, required currents and voltages to, to the device. And then we have a computer on which uh, we can, obviously on, on digital storage oscilloscope, we can also do some processing. And we compare this eye diagram with the, the eye diagram we can achieve by using our uh, digital signal processing routines we have been creating uh, here in Sweden since, since 2015. Okay, and then uh, coming to the results. So uh, it's the typical bit rate versus received optical power. And then we do this at two transmission speeds. One is at 170 gigabaud, another is at 200 gigabaud. So, and then uh, what is acceptable in uh, intra data center communications is that you receive bit rate, which is the limit of hard decision for the error correction. So in this case was uh, 3.80 minus uh, three. Uh, and, then, uh, and then with 170 gigabaud, we could achieve better signal quality, but of course, lower speed. And here I also show uh, the eye diagrams uh, of 170 gigabaud, like before transmission, after transmission, and 200 gigabaud before transmission and, and after transmission. And then, uh, so in this case, we show that we can achieve 200 gigabit per second with very wide open eye. And then we did uh, optimize, and as I said, we, we did optimization with uh, some equalization in, in the receiver. And we, the main fi finding was that we need some of, uh, uh, some, uh, it was a special structure of the, of the equalizer. It's called, uh, decision feedback equalizer. So we needed some feedback in the equalizer to get the signal quality uh, better. So, and then we also did uh, uh, the signal. Uh, we, we try to look at uh, what is what happens if we use uh, 100 uh, giga instead of, instead of 200 gigabit, we get to same 200 gigabit, but using uh, PAM4, and uh, to 250 gigabit if we use uh, pump six. So we use the same setup. Uh, the main difference was that we changed one amplification uh, amplifier in, in the receiver. So, but then we managed to achieve a, a quite good uh, performance. Uh, the, the, the speed in, in this case uh, for pump four is 200 gigabit as well. But then you get uh, smaller eyes, but the bit rate is 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 also crossing uh, uh, hard fake limit. And then uh, uh, we need uh, uh, for that we need around zero dBm, which means that if we have three point three dBm, then we can then we have a, a positive power budget, so we can transmit uh, more signal uh, over it. And then uh, yeah, so. And then we also did the same with pump six. Then you see that there's even more ice, but in this case, we were not really limited by bandwidth uh, for, for this baud rate. So we, we managed to show that multi-level signals also work. And then, yeah, so, uh, and then all this works, uh, I didn't do just myself. <laughs> there's a, a huge list of contributors uh, on this optical interconnect uh, topics. And we are not stopping here. We do also plan to do following up experiments to get uh, 
uh, to get even better results. And uh, what I wanted to also show, so I have showed the, this part of the of the world record, which was 200 gigabit on of keying, and uh, we also showed the uh, 11 gigabit on four with quantum cascade laser. Uh, so uh, it, it directly modulated. It's it's much lower bit rate in this case, but it's a new wavelength which we use for free space optical communications. And in, in that case, that was also a world record and also accepted in OFC conference in post deadline session, which doesn't happen that often to have two papers accepted in the in the same conference in, in a post deadline session. So uh, yeah, so these are the highlights for she, from She's the High Speed Transmission Lab. And then uh, I have a bit of, to tell about Twilight project. So uh, we come back to EML and then uh, we have a package device which offers a single channel. And uh, so what do we want to do in the future? We want to integrate those devices, those several, several devices to get to 1.6 terabit per second. And that can be done, for example, if we do 200 gigabit per wavelength or, or even higher, then we need a number of devices integrated uh, side by side. And uh, that we plan to do in, in a twilight project. So, and uh, yeah, so, so hopefully you will see some arrays of uh, externally modulated lasers running of 1.6 terabits per second in, in, in a soon future. And then uh, uh, I won't read all the conclusions. So uh, they're quite uh, technical, but I will just, uh, I uh, would like to thank you for your attention and then I leave some space for questions.